Hey everybody, it's Glenn back in this video with the Marvel Legends movie Ant-Man. Yet yeah, this ain't no ordinary action figure review, it's an action figure comparison with the Marvel Select movie Ant-Man. But before those two square off, let's look at the packaging back of the Legends one. Brief bio reads, using Hank Pym's proprietary technology, Scott Lang shrinks to become the half-inch superhero Ant-Man. Well, if his Ant-Man half-inch might be a bit generous, then of course this this is from the Ultron Builder Figure Wave, Ultron in the comics being a creation of Hank Pym Ant-Man. Yeah, as we see there on the left, this is the movie Ultron created by Tony Stark. Had Fox or Sony changed that origin, the internet would have broken under the weight of complaints. Double standards. Then joining Ant-Man in the wave are Wasp, Bulldozer, Tiger Shark, Grim Reaper and Giant Man. Stay tuned as all those will pop up here on my channel. And Ant-Man is the sole representation of the movie has different packaging side art, whereas the rest have an army of ants. I assume under the control of Ant-Man. So here is the Legends Ant-Man out of packaging. The unique detail of the cinematic costumes means Hasbro have little option but to splash out on a new sculpt. That's not often seen with Marvel Legends and with the way prices are creeping up it's nice to feel like you're getting your value for money. And all the details are there in the sculpt. And when it comes to sculpted detail alongside the Marvel Select version here on the right of the screen, and I think the Legends one can hold its head up high. But beyond the costume details, I feel like in general poise and posture, it lacks the overall realism of the select one. The Legends proportion seems a bit off to my eye, like the arms are too long and the legs too short. And taking a closer look, and although they share much of the same sculpted detail of the costume, the deco of the select one really accentuates that sculpted detail, with much of the silver paint line work seen on the select absent with the Legends version. And on the red parts of the costume, the select one has had some shading applied to further heighten realism, whereas those red parts on the Legends one just remain a flat colour. Comparing the head sculpts, and I prefer the silver deco of the Legends one, seems to have had a dark wash applied, which if you've seen any of my customs is artistically right up my alley. And in the sculpt on the Legends one, we can see the ports at the back of the neck there, where the select one takes attention to detail upper gear, with those ports having cables connecting to the helmet. In the comics, the pim particles that allow the shrinking are subatomic and often inhaled in gas form, so perhaps that's what those cables are delivering into the helmet. The lenses of the helmets are both painted, yet on the Legends it's more orange and only really looks like paint, whereas on the select version the paint does transcend being paint, looking much more like an actual lens. And of course the sculpt of the helmets are entirely different. Now I'm yet to see the movie, but looking at pictures online and I can't see any reference to Lang's helmet appearing like this Legends one. In those pictures, the helmet is either completely encasing the head as on the select version, or revealing the entire face and not just half of it. And in that way, the Legends one seems more referencing the comic helmet, which also reveals the lower face seen here in the Marvel Legends Giant Man series Ant-Man by Toy Biz. But maybe on seeing the movie, the style of the Marvel Legends helmet will fall into place. Really, in light of the size difference between the Legends and Select lines, it would have been fun to multi-scale the two in a display as if he was shrinking, yet the difference in the sculpts of the helmets prevents that kind of synergy. My Marvel Select Ant-Man here is the Disney Store exclusive version, so it does come with an interchangeable unhelmeted head, but the painting of the eyes on mine are really quite bungled, and the paint deco makes him look like he's wearing lipstick. So if you're in person buying one of these and they have multiple in store it might be worthwhile to take a minute to compare any variations in the deco from figure to figure. It also comes with interchangeable hands as the standard select also does. These fists, then there are very gestural posed hands which are more similar to the single set the Legends one has. Then a third set of open palms, yet not quite as gestural. And with this set you can wedge the unhelmeted head between the fingers to make him appear as if he's carrying the helmet. No interchangeable head with the Legends version, but it does easily pop off, and he does come with a builder figure head of Ultron, which we can place on for giggles. Looks like me and my Ultron voice changer mask, doesn't it? You're all puppets tangled in string. There are no strings on me. 
the select Ant-Man comes with a miniature Ant-Man measuring maybe two inches or so. It's not articulated, but for its size, the sculpt and deco is surprisingly good. Meanwhile, the Legends 1 comes with an even idia bidia Ant-Man. It doesn't stand, but instead is posed to ride this flying ant. It's pretty cute, isn't it? To me, it makes up for some of the shortcomings of the actual figure. And riding his flying ant, he's ready to do battle with Yellow Jacket, here also included as a tiny pack-in figure. It's kind of sad we didn't get an actual Legends of him to provide symmetry with the Ant-Man movie Legends. Beyond this tiny figure, the only other representation of the character I know of is the Yellow Jacket Funko Mystery Minis one that came with my Marvel Collector Core box. Oh, and no doubt there's a Mini Mates one. They make those for everything. Now looking at articulation and the heads of each rotate, they move down. The Legends one slightly more, yet neither really look up too much. At the shoulder, their arms rotate, their arms move up about the same amount. The Legends arm rotates at the shoulder, whereas the Select rotates at the elbow. And the Legends has a double jointed elbow, whereas the Select is essentially single jointed. And it's crystal clear here to see the difference that makes. Both have wrist rotation, then the wrist hinges, moving the hands down and up. Both have waist rotation, then the select one has a rotating diaphragm joint, whereas the Legends has a torso hinge. Those respective joints move this far forward, surprisingly the select one more, plus it also moves a shade further back. The hips, the legs move out to the side, they also move forward, the Legends one more so, yet the legs of both don't really move back. Both have upper leg rotation, then they both have double jointed knees, and the ankles of each are hinged, moving the feet backwards and forwards, then both have that ankle rocker pivot I love, which in practice is about even with this being both posed at their widest stance possible, still with both feet flat on the floor. So all things considered, and while the pack-ins that come with the Legends 1 do up the fun factor for me, but if you're solely looking for the definitive Ant-Man, then I back the select one. Of course it depends what fits best into your own collection, so let me know in the comments below. And for another Legends vs Select action figure comparison, click the video on the right for the Hulkbuster. As ever, I sure would appreciate it if you could give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe for more, and I hope to see you next time. Mm, bye.